in the tiny village of Wami in the state of Watami, Juana Apostolis, the daughter of migrant workers, married a bootlegger, Carlos Amadeo. Though his moonshine was subpar, news of his wife's hangover tonic, brewed from a combination of lemons and jalapenos, soon spread, allowing the couple to purchase a small lemon grove and start a family. In 1909, the couple had their fifth child, Juan Carlos de los Parlotes de Amadeo, whom a little over a century later would become the infamous luchador who took the world by storm. The Unauthorized Capri, Hustlers Edition. Born in the Lemo Republic of Watami and raised by dogs, Juan Carlos de los Barlotes de Amadeo would become the most famous luchador the world had ever known. But the road to fame would be a long and windy one. With the rest of the world preoccupied with World War I, the Watami peasants revolted against the Grove owners. In another sector, the rebels mass and leave for the front. Perfectly trained troops prepared to do any kind of combat. In the ensuing nationalization of the country's agriculture, the Amadeo's land was seized. Unable to meet her child's insatiable need for milk, Perro's mother nursed him from the spouts of the leftover barrels of family tonic, but was eventually forced to have him raised by dogs because only they had enough nipples to feed him. The pack quickly accepted him and called him Wasted Apero, or Dog Bone, because of the way his mother carried him around. Though he would come to love his adoptive family as his own, that happiness would turn out to be short-lived. Tales of this period are sketchy. It is known that as Hueso reached adulthood, he became increasingly agitated at the new government's banning of lemon growing and went into hiding. This guerrilla training video, rumored to contain Hueso, is the only footage thought to survive. Es que nosotros nunca hemos tenido ese derecho. Libertades de expresión, eh, derechos de organizarnos libremente, derechos de dar el precio de nuestro producto. Sin le monde serait né pour serait Successful sweep of the jungles dispersed the guerrillas, and Hueso was forced to flee his homeland, wandering the countryside on foot, a man without a nation. A number of failed careers followed. Based for a band in the 70s known as the Limo Wave. Luchadors, badass. Surf music plus luchadors equals awesome. <laughs> Though critically acclaimed, the group failed to find an audience, and the wave threw in the towel in 1974. Despite some memorable bit parts, an acting career fared little better. The obvious visual evidence, Commissioner, is that he is of the same breed as yourself. Are you blind, Commander Spock? <laughs> Look at me. I fail to see the significant difference. Loki is white on the right side. All of his people are white on the right side. Ben Hueso would stumble upon the career that would change his life forever. He could go all the way! Hueso had finally found his calling. Oh, America! Are you serious? It is showtime, baby! Here we go! Hueso was discovered by wrestling manager Jack Mikowski while wrestling with a bear over a scrap of roadkill, and he signed them both. There would be photo shoots, autographs, t-shirts, his own toy line, and a movie series in Broomfield, Colorado. Then it would all, just as quickly, come crashing down. Hueso's wrestling partner and manager quarreled. The fur and hair are all over the place here. Grapple ate McClowski, leaving nothing but the head. A 
few days later, Baron von Grappel died of indigestion. A devastated Wayso vowed to never let the skin and head leave his side. His insistence on carrying his friend's remains with him everywhere he would go made it impossible to fly commercial in the post-9-11 world. So from then on, Hueso traveled everywhere on foot, no matter the distance. A pedestrian managed to capture this rare video footage of the traveler. Back in Hueso's homeland, the revolution hadn't died. Growing lemons became a symbol of resistance. The people began brewing Hueso's family tonic underground naming it after Hueso's famous cry for freedom, Lemon Napalm. The government was forced to hold early elections and institute democratic reforms, and Lemon Napalm was made the official national drink, and Hueso de Perro its official spokesman. Lemon Napalm! <laughs> Spreading the taste of freedom brought him here. A frenzy of media outlets began to speculate as to Hueso's true identity. Hueso's appearances became more frequent. No one could predict when or where Hueso would arrive, and he would disappear just as suddenly with the enigmatic Mo Later. People began asking questions, and pretty soon it seemed as though everybody had a theory about the masked man. Westward jumped to the conclusion that it must be Tom Cross, owner of the Smoky Banana Tattoos. Hueso then embarrassed the Weekly by releasing this photo of him with his good friend. Next came the Daily Camera's Friday Mag, outing Broomfield Enterprise staff writer Dylan Otto Kreider, where Kreider's co-worker is privy to some information Westward didn't have. Tonight, we answer that question and many others. Headline, I gotta go! Headline, I gotta go! He could!